We're at the end of the river, Stork, Bishop Storford. We've been here for one day. Two nights. Yeah, and which wasn't a very good night because there was some sort of stupid alarm going off in some sort of stupid parking lot right beside some sort of stupid end of stupid canal. <laughs> 2 or 2 a.m. It was extremely irritating because you, you ba basically just were not capable of sleeping. It was that loud. And we're recording inside because it's, it's raining. <laughs> but it's supposed to end in the next um, 15 minutes or so according to Google. So, so it'll be late. <laughs> probably be going until midnight. We need to keep moving. So, um, we're preparing for the Thames run that will be coming up. We've bought the radio, we've bought everything we need, but we need to do some engine servicing, which means getting to um, some place where there's a Strap. chandlery and stuff. Did and you say Stansted? Stansted Marina um, up the River Lee is supposed to be pretty good for, for at least having some of the things we need. So we've got to basically push down the stort, get to the junction with the Lee, turn up and uh, the marina is just below Stansted Lock so it's not too far up the lee. Um, there might be still closures on the lee. There have been because there hasn't been enough rain. But one way or another it's raining so the canal levels um, should go up <laughs> piquito, tiny amount. But um, we're not going to get that far today. So. No, not even close. <laughs> so anyway we've got to basically turn around and go back down the stort. Well you've already turned around. Um, oh yes I have already turned around. Right we don't have to turn around we just have to start off back down the stort. We've got to stop and get some water. We've had something on the way in, we had something go sort of screw with the prop, so I need to get in. last night and I'm really behind on my edits. I think I was editing vlog 86 um, and I think that's like seven vlogs away. I have no idea what number this is. Mm -hmm. And I discovered, much to my horror, that a lot of, well, all of my audio um, was messed up. So I was like, oh my goodness, that's like seven vlogs where I've got no audio recording. So I, I called my husband. Technical support. <laughs> I called technical support and he did some investigation. And we discovered that we've somehow damaged the audio recorder on the right hand, what's it called? Microphone. Yeah, the microphone capsule for the right channel so, is damaged in some way. Yeah, so that's the side that's distorted. So luckily I've still got all the audio on the left hand side. So for the last like seven or whatever vlogs. You're not listening in stereo. <laughs> you'll only hear the left hand audio. Which hopefully was pointing to us in somewhat the right direction. It's mixed, so yeah. that's annoying. So we need to try and get that fixed or we need to get some external mics. So thank you to our patrons um, because we actually have some money to be able to do it. We didn't really announce the fact that we put a Patreon up. We And we waited a year before we yeah, did Yeah, we, we waited a year. We kept having people say, you know, um, we'd like to help. Can you and you put one up. And one reason we didn't do it is because we didn't want to ask for money and we didn't need anything. Like before we started the videos, we kind of got all the kit we thought we needed and everything was going fine. Yeah. But then after a year, like the work costs. And they're mainly the equipment costs. We've had to buy a um, new, hard new hard drive. We have occasionally had to replace some chargers and stuff. We basically started running into the place at which um, hardware starts to break. <laughs> so so um, we need to replace that hardware or we need to get it repaired. So we kind of went, all right, maybe we should start a Patreon and just sort of let it trickle in if people are happy to do that. And we've been amazed that so many people have. Like, I was really surprised. That yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, especially considering it's been completely passive, it's been great. I still don't want to, like ask anybody to do it. I just want to let people know that if you were thinking about doing it uh, and, you, and you wanted to help with um, things like equipment costs, we, we have to be frugal and um, replacing hardware isn't really within kind of our budget. No. So we sort of have this problem of if we want to keep doing the videos, we are going to need to 
replace some of the hardware. Yeah, like um, we're not looking to earn a living from it. We're not looking no, not to make. Oh no, <laughs> we don't have enough views. We're not looking to even make money from it, but we. And we, but we really enjoy doing it and we really enjoy the community we get from it like that has been so amazing basically we've had no income since we started the videos we've you know we've got the little bit that comes in from youtube from via ad revenue and we've got the little bit that has been trickling in with the patreon but which is fine we, we plan that we plan to live on savings but we can't really justify spending money on equipment because because that's not food. Yeah. <laughs> basically, like it's, it's not, it's not food and it's not fuel, and it doesn't get us further along. So we kind of have to see that as like this initial investment that we made, and then it was that we, we made were, when we were still working. Yeah, we made it when we were still working. We bought a bunch of gear, and that was a gamble because, like, we'd not really vlogged before. We'd done a few experiments when we travelled in the states, but like, we didn't know if I'd enjoy it and want to carry on, or if anyone would even watch. Yeah. And it has paid off, like that investment. Oh yeah, it's totally paid off because. We enjoy doing the vlogs. We've got them now to watch back, and we really love the community that we've kind of found through the videos. So yeah, but and even just, just for for letting my mom keep up. Yeah, it's been, been it's been great. It's just we can't justify spending any more money on them while we're not earning. So right. thank you to the patrons because we can now afford to get that fixed yeah. and <laughs> and hopefully keep you not having to listen with just the left ear or <laughs> both ears to just the left ear so the reason we bought the other gopro is because um we always have one at the front um and that's where we record the time lapse and some people don't like the time lapse so much but i try not to use a lot of it but it does i think it really works to kind of tell the story of moving and i like using it in the locks and yeah it's just if it was real time like if it, you know how to be a logistical um, nightmare for us because it, it, this is the problem is we've the data, and this is the one thing, whenever we get the request for real-time videos, it's like, yeah, I'd like to be able to help you, but the data is just ridiculous. Like, we would fill up a card per trip, you know, with, with like, probably uh, only about an hour's worth of footage. And if you think our cruises are, um, like, between, like, f four hours and nine, nine. And, yeah, nine hours long, like, we're just... We don't have the batteries, we don't have the data cards, we don't have the hard drives, yeah. and we don't have the Wi-Fi to upload that. So yeah, because we're, we're like, we're flipping the batteries three times during, like, say on a six-hour trip, we'll have to change the batteries probably three times on the GoPro. And at the end of it, we'll have a large number of files that have to be transferred onto the computer, which means we need to offload stuff from the computer onto the external hard drives to just make enough room to be able to have Joe edit it. Have a computer with, just with the live stuff. And then eventually we can sort of, um, you know, take stuff and, and sort of archive it to disk. But we don't have, <laughs> we don't have like unlimited internet. So we're not backing stuff up to the cloud. So somebody said, you know, well, if you go out on the Thames and you sink, you'll have, you know, you'll have great footage. And I'm like, yeah, it'll be on the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> like, it'll be, it'll be on the bottom. They're, we're not going to be able to show you any of that and he's like well you know aren't you backing up to the cloud how so that's why we don't do real-time videos so but if we've got a second camera we can have more footage so yeah we can have a point of view either to, you know on the side of the boat or at the back of the boat pointing backwards or at the back of the boat pointing to the side or whatever so the reason that we decided to go ahead and get the gopro straight away or now is we got we want that for the terms i think oh yeah it'd be good to have the view backwards it would be good to have like some better idea of what's going on around you and everything on it. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we're sort of joggling things around to make sure that we can do it, but and we will do it and have crew on board with us and nobody drowns. <laughs> but uh, but we want to document it as well as, as we can, so it'll be good that we have the second camera. Okay, well, let's get on this cruise. I think it's stopped raining. Yes. No. But right. it's very light now. It's just going to be All right, she's going to walk the dog. I'm going to get in the weed hatch. Well, somebody's going to walk the dog. George? George needs a walkies. He's been right. so good and patient. <laughs> How are you enjoying your cruise? Well, it'd be better if I was dry. I mean, it is, you know, once you get out of Bishop's Stortford, 
itself, like the uh, first two locks. This big section here is quite pretty and, and really nice. Um, lots of airplanes, some of which are at very, very low altitudes. But other than that noise, like it's, you know, it is really quite nice. There's lots of birds, lots of wildlife, lots of fish in the water. A couple of horses right over there, or cows, possibly pot cows, that's cows. Horses back the other way. Different types of asses on these things. Um, the butt of a horse is much, much different than the butt of a cow, but I didn't notice. Yeah, no, it's pretty out here. I just wish that the rain had held off for a little bit longer. So that was all two days ago and we were heading down to Royden but something came up and we stopped in Sawbridgeworth um, about lunchtime and we've been here for two nights and now it's time we're to moving go. on. And for once we've said we're going to go early and it's eight o'clock so that counts as early. Yeah so it's eight o'clock uh, it's time to get off we're low on diesel so today we got to pick up some diesel. We should pump up with water if we find a place to pump up with some water. Um, but basically it's just a rush down the Stort and then up the lead. So today we're hoping to make it um, to the junction and up to at least um, well, there's two the locks, marina there. Yeah, there's two locks on the lead that are currently only open between 3pm and 4pm. And it says essential travel only. So what we're going to do is try and get there. And, and then see speak. how essential they mean. Yeah, we can speak to, because they're unlocked by staff at three o'clock. So hopefully we can speak to them and say, can we go up to the end? And if they say, no, it really is emergency only, then we'll just turn around and go back. If they say, yeah, it's fine, we'll go up to the end. Um, but we'd kind of like to be there by three o'clock so we can catch whoever's there opening the lock. Yeah, so hopefully we actually make that. And it's quite fresh today, so after months and months of us going, it's so hot, it's so hot, now you're going to listen to us go, it's so cold. It's so cold. It's not really cold, it's just... No, it's beautiful. <laughs> it got chilly enough last night for the first time. Oh, bugger, a boat's going. Or turning. Always on this blooming navigation, there's always a boat to get stuck behind. <laughs> and they're probably the ones who left that one down last night everybody has a thing here for leaving gates even open. though on the gates is like conserve water shut the gates and and they leave them wide open so the one above us which is leaking like mad from the top was left closed last night and that oh, one's a hydraulic it or sorry we left open last night and that's a hydraulic you just push a button it's not hard <laughs> <sighs> okay i'm gonna go close that one okay um i need your keys to do that okay So we've been sharing the locks uh, with a cruiser. Um, it's a fairly short boat, he's, he's about 28 feet, so we can fit in the two of us together. Which means that I spend a bunch of time at the back trying not to end up on the sill. Um, luckily there's a couple of feet of room to move, so it's not really dangerous or anything. It's just a little bit, uh, well, intensive. 
But uh, Joe's back there closing the gates on this one. Um, I'm going to beat her to the next one. Apparently there's a boat in front of us, so we're going to end up having to catch um, a lock that is down. The guy in front of me will start to raise that. I will try and get off to help him raise that, and we'll move in. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a traffic jam in motion. And this is us turning off of the Stort and back onto the Lee and almost immediately the landscape has changed and the river is full of boats again. We get to the lock about half an hour early, so we stop and have some lunch and then Michael goes up and speaks to the lock keeper. He's more than happy for us to go through and luckily another narrow boat turns up and because we're back on the lee the locks are wide enough for two boats to fit in side by side. We just need to wait for the boat in the lock to come down first. It's been a very, very, very long day. We have gone down the Stort from Sawbridgeworth we mm -hmm. all the way to the junction with the Lee, all the way up the junction to yes, Hertford. We've done the whole of the. We've um, done the whole of the Lee from the junction. Two of the locks have been closed due to water levels for um, a couple of weeks now, and they've been opening them for a couple of hours each day. And it was open for one hour today, and we happened to show up at just the right time to be the first ones up, so we got to go up. Um, yeah. And I'm glad we did, like I was umming and ahhing, because it says essential travel only, and w our travel isn't essential, but we spoke to the lock keeper and he was like, he was like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And it turns out that the lee above that lock is the nicest of the whole of the lee. <laughs> Pretty much. There's the wear lock. Um, from basically that beginning to the wear lock and then on most of the way to here to here yeah. it's just beautiful it's much it's nicer than the rest of it yeah by far yeah and the problem is we got here and there's no mooring so we're on a cadet landing station so if any canoes turn up we're in their way yeah which will be sad and horrible of us but it's 6 30 so we're hoping they're done for the day and we're going to be off before they get up tomorrow yeah Hopefully, you never know, it's cadets, they might be really keen. So basically we're going to be off at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning because we need to make it down to the opening of the locks that lets us go down. Which is a shame, like if there was a nice mooring and we had, didn't have commitments, it seems like quite a nice place to stay or, or where would have been a nice place to spend a couple of days. Yeah. So coming down the rest of the Stort was um, interesting. We shared locks with a cruiser boat. Well, that was a blessing and a curse. <laughs> More blessing than a curse. Because they pulled off just as we were setting off. So I was like, we're going to be behind them for every single lock. And um, and they're a very small boat. So it was a little bit of And like they were a little bit 
slow. <laughs> <laughs> they they weren't in a hurry. They let's put it that way. It was better for them to have us with them, yeah. and it was better for us. But it did mean that it was a little slow going because even though we were sharing, um, you know, he basically had to pull in and then and then get off and just pull the boat yeah, as far really forward as possible. So I could fit in with just enough room to miss the. the and even um, when I said to him, like, the sill. even when I said to him, "You stay on the boat, I'll do it." He didn't want to do that, and then because he wanted to pull his weight, but then he would take a long time to climb back down onto his boat afterwards. Yeah. Because the locks on the Lee are scheduled, all the boats turned up at once to go through them, which was good because there was another narrow boat that we got shared the two locks with that were only open for an hour, and then there was two more locks and we shared those with them. As well. Yep. And he, he helped us out when we got here because we thought we had a long mooring for us and a short mooring for him. And it turned out that the long mooring was shallow enough that we grounded out, couldn't go in there. Um, and then we were like, well, we'll go down into uh, Hertford itself and see if there's anything available. Because we had to turn around anyway because yeah. it's at the end of the navigation. So, yeah, which is really annoying that the actual turning point is beyond the sign well, that says why end said, of navigation. I said to you, there's no way to turn. As I get there, and there's this very short bridge that says end of navigation, there's this kind of sense of like, this yeah, could be an that. incredibly bad idea. I'm just gonna ground. Oh, and just before I got there, I, I, I ran through somebody's fishing lines. He was fishing off the front end of his boat, and um, just the angle of the sun meant, like, the line was completely invisible. The only thing that I could see was that the the um, the actual rod was sort of twitching a little bit, which means he might have caught a fish immediately before I made him catch a boat. So, yeah, it was not the most... Uh, unembarrassing of moments because I basically nearly hauled the rod and the guy holding the rod off the front of the boat but he apologized to me <laughs> I'm just like um yeah okay yes it was your fault I'll go with that there was a cute moment like there was lots of people meeting George today and these two little girls met him and then they went off for their walk while we were at a lock and then I met them when I was walking a bit further and they were like all excited because they saw George again and they'd been feeding the ducks and one of the little girls had like half a loaf a half a slice of bread in her hands and George just snuffled it right out of her fingers <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did her mom say to the fact that she just watched the hand disappear into his in well, the luckily belt. George is very good around fingers. Yes, he is. He's so good. So basically that's that's the trip down the uh, Lee or trip down the Stort and the Lee. Interrupted by one day of having to disappear off the boat. Um and now we just have to get back to the limehouse. Yeah. Oh and that reminds me, um part way on the way down the Stort was when we met Mark. Um Oh yeah should mention that and and uh, we'd had this we'd stopped and had a great conversation with him he stuck his head out among three dogs as we passed um, going up to Bishop Storford a few days before so when we came down he stuck his head out again and three Labradors again um, super he's friendly he's just bought his boat um, and he's about to go continuous cruising so it's a very exciting time and it's very nice to meet him yep and, and he's going to start a channel as well um, which off-grid happiness. Off -grid happiness so look forward to that when it actually starts up yeah, it was just really nice to meet him. I managed to meet the dogs, get in and have like three Labradors snuffling me while I'm trying to keep the boat from, from going off the side. But by the time we pulled up on that day and meant to sit down and actually record, we'd... Uh, oh, we'd we were halfway down the river. Yeah, we'd sort of gotten halfway down the river and we'd found out that we had to do this run into... Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and following along and all your support. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. We love to hear from you, so do comment below. Um, if you want a reminder that the video has gone live, click the bell and you'll get a notification. I'm better at this than you. Yeah, you probably are. <laughs> Doobly doo. Hey George. Oh, sweet Georgie boy. It's recording. George is like, why are we not in the park? I don't understand. There's a park nearby throwing. We know about it. Why are we not in the park? Mommy and Daddy. We are going to the park before you move the boat, right? 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so dark. Oh, I'm back. I am so cute. Oh, and I am back. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, that is not a biscuit. It looks like a biscuit. Okay, now we have a ghostly green glow. And we look like we're in a horror movie. You got some biscuits, lady? Where's the biscuits? Who are you calling, Hi. Who are you calling lady? Hey? Mama. Yeah, that's better. Oh, oh. Right in front of your nose, George. My nose is full of biscuits. Is everyone ready? Mm. Well, 
for a certain degree of ready. Oh, happy George. Got some biscuits. Got some biscuits. So if no one wants to hear you eating on the video, what well, they probably do actually. They're obsessed with you. There's nothing there. Biscuit. Maybe mommy would give me a biscuit if there was a biscuit. Anyway. <gasps> biscuit! Oh, oh happy dog. We are where are we? In Bishop. Bishop Storford. We're at the end of the uh so Bye. Bye bye, George. And it was just, it was actually like, so, like, so there was a car alarm going, dwee, 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 dwee. And then there was this thing, every couple of seconds, they'd go, woo, Figure something else out. Learn sign language. Mime. It's possible <laughs> we'll be doing a couple of videos by mime. We're going on the Thames. <laughs> Big river. <laughs> Extremely large shark over there. <laughs> Good God. Yeah, so thanks, Mike. It's getting too hard. Technical support is getting tired. George, get away from there. George. Come here. That was so cute. It's like being the bolus of undigested food on its way through, or possibly being that part of a centipede that stays in, mo in like one place while everything else moves around it. I don't really know. Anyway, we're on our way. What do you do, George? Seriously. You just watch your daddy go down the lock. Oh, we stopped the diesel. That was boring. Because of the lock. Yeah, it was, that was incredibly boring. Thanks for watching. Um, have you twisted it? Harry, have you twisted it? On the same day that you sent... All of a sudden she sends me a text about this American news channel and this quote underneath that, like, um, Trump worried about... Pecker leakage. Pecker leakage. <laughs> I knew it would have been true. And she's like, is this true? What? <laughs> I nearly crashed. Anyway.